Hi everyone. Today we're going to explore and talk about the glyoxylate cycle. I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So let's get started. First, where does this cycle take place? And what is it? So a lot of plants store lipids or oil and proteins in their seeds, and these are used for energy and as biosynthetic precursors. This happens because the plant is basically a little baby and it has not developed the ability to undergo photosynthesis. The cycle is how fatty acids are converted into high carbohydrates until the plant is big enough to carry photosynthesis on its own. So here I have a little germinating plant drawing, which means that the glyoxylate cycle is definitely taking place within it. And the cycle is important because it is how the plant survives and it is crucial in carbohydrate metabolism in plants. So where does this happen? It takes place in glyoxysomes, which, has, which are a special type of peroxisome found in plants. And um, triglycerols are used as fuel by them, first by being hydrolyzed into fatty acids, and then they undergo beta oxidation to acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA enters the glyoxylate cycle and yields seconate to be used in the citric acid cycle in mitochondria. But let's dive a little bit deeper. So this arrow is just to show that the second eight will be used, um, will be shuttled to mitochondria, which will be used in the citric acid cycle. So in this slide, we're going to go step by step in the cycle so that we, go, we don't get confused. This cycle should be easy to understand, however, because it's basically a little short and sweet citric acid cycle, and it's much more simpler. So first, acetyl-CoA condenses with oxa oxaloacetate and forms citrate using citrate synthase. Then, citrate is converted to isocitrate with aconitase, just like in the citric acid cycle. The next steps are new, so be ready. Isocitrate is cleaved by isocitrate lyase to form succinate and glyoxylate, glyoxylate. And this glyoxylate condenses with another molecule of acetyl-CoA to yield malate. And the enzyme responsible for this reaction is malate synthase. And this is another enzyme that you should remember because it's unique to this cycle. And it's really easy to remember because it makes malate, so it synthesizes it and malate synthase. Pretty simple. Next, the malate is oxidized to oxaloacetate, which is then able to condense with acetyl-CoA again and start the cycle all over again. So there's the cycle all finished for you. So the succinate that was produced in a previous step um, from isocitrate, um, using the enzyme isocitrate lyase, producing succinate, can then pass into the matrix of the mitochondria and be converted into oxaloacetate. So eventually this oxaloacetate can be converted to phospholinopyruvate by PEP carboxynase, then to fructose 6-phosphate, which is a precursor of sucrose. This means that glucogenesis can take place as well as glucose synthesis. So all in all, in order for germinating seeds to make sucrose, cellular processes in the glyoxysomes, mitochondria, and the cytosol have to take place. And okay, let's talk numbers. Each turn of the cycle consumes two molecules of acetyl-CoA and produces one molecule of succinate, which is over here, which you can see is a four carbon molecule. And we already talked about how it's transported into the mitochondrial matrix. Lastly, we keep talking about plants, 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 and plants. But what about animal cells? Well, animals cannot make sugar from fats. And this is because we don't have the glyoxylate cycle. And more specifically, the reaction of pyruvate dehydrogenase with acetyl-CoA is irreversible. So we can't go back. Also, animals don't have the enzymes that are specific to the cycle, which I outlined as isocitrate lyase and malate synthase. So this means that there's no way for animals to convert acetyl-CoA to pyruvate or oxaloacetate. And in simple terms, we cannot make glucose from lipids. So that is it. Today you learned about the glyoxylate cycle. We went over each step and where it takes place, and most importantly, why it takes place. 
Lastly, I want to point out that all pictures and drawings in this presentation are, are modified or redrawn and taken from my Principles of Biochemistry textbook, which is cited right here. Um, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for listening.